I'm going to demonstrate how to make this uh, box structure. This is a uh, case bound uh, process. Uh, it's usually referred to as rigid packaging, which means it's set up. It doesn't fold flat. It doesn't necessarily come from one die cut piece. So it's actually a handmade process. We're wrapping uh, paper or it could be leather or any kind of special material around chipboard. Um, so it's, we can kind of, this one I combined um, some magnets in it in the front. So I just have a, a nice open tray and then we have this uh, outer sleeve that's glued on it. It's a very typical configuration. Uh, quite often this is glued into position, but I left this one open just to suggest that there might be some kind of graphics in here. Maybe it opens like a, in a book style like this. So we'll take a look at that. All right, the first step is gonna be to make the tray. The, uh, we're using chipboard, and they do refer to this as a double ply. It's quite thick. Uh, it's about 120 thousandths, which is about an eighth of an inch. And then what do we have here? Let's see. Almost about three and a half millimeters, three millimeters about. So it's quite thick. It's a little hard to cut. There are a couple ways of doing this, and I've seen all of these uh, being utilized. Uh, one way is to take these parts and literally cut them out separately, separate panels. And what they do is they rely on the, the wrapping material to hold everything together. So here I lightly in pencil laid out, this is gonna be the paper that I'm going to wrap on it. So one technique, which is very popular, is they'll take the chipboard parts, like for example, there'll be a perfect square, and they would glue that right down here. And they would actually cut out these four side panels separately and glue them down and then leave just a little bit of space in between, maybe two or three millimeters in between uh, and glue them down. And then they would just fold that up and then use the corner tabs to hold everything together. So that's actually very popular, usually with the thinner boards that's done or the um, high volume type, a little less hand, hand work to be done. We can also take the parts and we can cut them separately and then glue them together. Literally just take our time, glue the panels together, hold it together with tape and get and actually build a box by just gluing the edges together and then take that and wrap it. So I'm doing sort of a combination of the two. I'm gonna take, uh, instead of trying to glue all that, what I'm doing is I'm doing partial cuts here on the bottom. I know these don't look very clean right now, but once we wrap it, the paper will ra ra radius over that and, and it'll turn out quite nice. So I'm just scoring these and folding these up. And what I'm doing is I'm compensating for the edge of the material. I'm adding just a little bit of chip here that represents the thickness of this board. So when I come around, I'm gonna have a glue joint right there and I'll put some tape on that to hold that together. So I kind of like this just for basic boxes so I don't have to glue all the long joints. And it kind of gives me this accurate bonding here, put this together, but they're all good. All the techniques are good. And sometimes it depends on whether you're using thick board or thin board. This one's gonna have magnets in it. So uh, that's another reason this thick board is really good because I have a magnet that is almost exactly the thickness of this board. So all I have to do is cut a hole and when after I wrap the paper, I just place the magnet in there and it gets trapped in between the paper. Uh, so that works pretty well. So this is gonna be an open tray. And then I'm gonna have the outside piece that comes around and creates a lid and then I'll have magnets in it. So this is a very basic setup, kind of a rigid box structure. It's very typical, but it'll give us an idea of some of the techniques involved with uh, setting these up. This is essentially a handmade process. Some of it is automated, like for example, uh, they might make a die, just like we've been working with the rest of our things to cut these out, you know, punch out the holes and then uh, make some of the scores and things so they could fold that up. So there will be die creation, but it's a lot different than our folding cartons and our corrugated parts. As a designer, we don't necessarily have to work out the die line like we've been doing in our other projects because it is handmade and it can be made in many different ways. And that's sort of up to the vendor. As a designer, we need to figure out what the package is going to look like. That's what's important. I'm gonna emphasize that in class. So we can definitely make mock-ups, samples of what it looks like. We could use foam core, you could cut it out of different chipboard, 
You could do a whole series of th different things to work out the functionality of the package. What I'm gonna show you here is what, how in production a rigid box is made, but it can get very involved and it leans into making prototypes, which is more about in our prototype class, we're actually making a finished item. I still wanna keep uh, for our class that in the design vernacular, where we're working out designs and figuring things out. So there's a little fine line there. This is what I'm gonna show you now is a little bit more about prototyping. In class, I'm gonna show you examples of, you know, much more elaborate designs that are very unique and interesting, and I'm not gonna wrap them them all. I'm just gonna make it, like fabricate it by hand to show the functionality. So you'll see the difference between the two. All right, so let's get started with this. So I'm gonna use this as a wrap, and this is where I started. I laid it out, <clears throat> made my little compensation here for the um, overlap. So all we really need to do here is I left this one open. I just wanted to demonstrate that. This board is quite stiff. So I'm going to do a partial cut right on this line here. And then fold that over. So I'm kind of breaking through about halfway through the material. I'm going to go a little bit more. There we go. So I made this box perfectly square. It's a six by six by one and a half. So the location of the magnets, it's all symmetrical. So it's actually easy. I don't have to keep track of a shorter end or a lower end. So what's going to happen is this is going to come in. Let's just check my dimensions here. Okay, I'm a little off. I'm going to clean that. I just want to make sure this is lining up nicely. This is sticking up slightly here. So we don't want that. Just make sure this is in position. All right, so I need to remove just a little bit of material. <clears throat> so this is gonna be a little bit different than just developing a perfect die line in our 3D file and then trying to print it out and get it to work. This is gonna be handmade. And we're gonna kind of just work it up as we go, check dimensions make modifications and sort of just get it to the point where it's a complete, complete piece of geometry. All right, so that's, that's nice right there. All right, so all we really have to do, and I'm just gonna use Elmer's glue. So chip is very rough. It's a cheap material. Um, it's usually uh, unfinished and it's usually made out of recycled material, but it's very rigid. So especially with this thick, uh, thick thickness here, we can build this box and make it very strong, but we're gonna cover it. So it's not so much about these little details. So we're gonna glue it together as nicely as we can, but a lot of the imperfections and things like that will be covered. So we just need to make sure we get enough glue. This is very pulpy material. So I'm gonna use a little bit more than I normally would because I really want that to soak into the material. So I'm just going to kind of get it on both surfaces here. Let that set in. I might even put it on both surfaces. Okay. So I'm just going to hold that and I'm going to use a piece of tape to bring that around. Okay, it's more about the edges meeting as best I can. So that looks good. So we just need to do that in all four corners. All right, so that's essentially it. So we'll let this dry a little bit and then we'll glue this to the, to the material. So it's sort of like wrapping a present very carefully <clears throat> to get all these pieces to work. All right, so we'll let that dry, and then I'm going to mount that into the black. All right, so I have the twin tack, or the double stick, on, on the black material that I'm going to use. But I'm doing it in sections. So we can do this. We want to take this and glue the, you know, stick this into the middle, and then we're going to wrap up all these pieces. 
So I've done this, and it's, it's a bit challenging. I put the uh, the double stick material on the black, and I peeled the whole thing off, so all of it was sticky. And you have to put this into position perfectly, and then you have to wrap these around. It's really hard to do. So my recommendation is to do it in pieces. So I have like a square section in the middle here, and then I have these other sections that are independent, so I can peel the material away individually. Because there are some little customization details. You know, once you put this in there and I start wrapping it around, I start trimming and making little edge details. And to do that with the adhesive exposed, it's almost impossible. So that's the process I'm gonna use. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna peel off just the center piece and do one thing at a time. Get the box nicely centered in the middle, take a breath, and then start to look at all the individual panels. All right, so I have the um, center part uh, glued down with the twin tack, and now I have these separate sections here that still have the backing material on, so I'm trying to do those in steps. Um, to, I, there's some little nuances that we have to work on. So I did this back panel, and I rolled that in, and that's looking pretty good. So I just put like a little bit of mark, um, a black marker here in the corners, because if any of that shows through, that'll be really high contrast against my black. So all our projects have little nuances that are a little different, so we have to make those accommodations. So I need to get my magnets in here, and I'm going to bring this up. So I need to bring this up and then put the magnets in and fold it. But there's some little details that we need to do. So I'm going to try to get this so we can see. So this piece of material is going to wrap up inside here, and it needs to go in. So I need to remove some of this material so it'll fit inside, so roughly the thickness of that board. But what we need to do is when it travels across the top of the board, by where I have that black marker, we need a 45 degree little notch about like that. I'm just doing this by eye, cutting that little 45 that we need right there. So that's very critical. Then we need to Eliminate, let me get some light down here. We need to eliminate this material. So I'm gonna line this up with that inside edge. And I'm going to line up with that little 45 that I just made there. And I'm just going to reduce this material here. And let me just get that in there. So now we have it going across the top and then that should go inside nicely. So we need to do that on this side. Now the crazy part is I'm left-handed so this is gonna be a challenging, let me try. I'll try to use my right hand. So I'm going to line that up on the inside edge. Keep this as parallel as I can, like so. And I'm gonna hold this and use my right hand. Okay, I'm not very good at this with my right hand. Voila. Okay, so that should give me what I need for that to work. Okay, this one, this 45 doesn't look very 45. So I'm gonna move that in a little bit. My eye was off on that one. Okay, it's still not working. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a little Kind of a little test run here. Make sure that's going to fit inside. Looks good. So I think that'll be okay. And then this one is going to come around the corner. And that looks good. Okay. So I just need to make sure I get the magnets in there before I close the whole thing up. So I have them ready. So I'm just going to peel off this piece of the twin tack. And sometimes it's a little difficult to get the corners to pull up. So let's see if I can get this to come apart. Yeah, it's hard. Let's see if I can get that to come all the way across. Get that to peel out. Okay, that works. Let's do that here. Okay. So by doing this twin tack in sections, I'm, I'm able to make these subtle accommodations and then get this to work. All right, so what I'm gonna to try to do is roll this on this front edge and get that to sit nice and tight like that. Let's take a look at the outside. So that looks pretty good. 
have a nice rolled edge down here. So that's nice. Now I'm just gonna get this out of the way. So what we need to do, like I did over here, is we need to wrap this right around the corner here. And that's what keeps that corner really nice and clean. And that's sort of the whole principle of uh, rigid case bound boxes. It's, it's like wrapping a present really, really well. It's a little off in there. Okay, not bad. Okay, I just wanna make sure I don't close that before I put the magnets in. I've done that and it's done the drag. So I'm just gonna stick this into this little hole right in here. So by doing this, the magnet only has to work through the piece of paper and not through the chipboard. Looks good. So now I can bring in this last piece of material. So I'm going to bring that in tightly across the top, right here. And then bring that all the way down inside. All right, so that looks good. I have my little 45, not too bad. Nice clean rolled edge here. So when this comes around, we should have a nice clean edge in here. All right, looks good. So the magnet is now trapped inside. We can see it slightly, but that's fine. So I am using a matte paper, so we have to be careful this doesn't get too scuffed. So I'm trying to be as careful. And the matte is quite nice versus, you know, really shiny. But the shiny materials do hold up a little better. It's a little cleaner. Okay. So that looks good. So we also have to make these other accommodations. I did that here. Um, so I'm going to do that same thing. There's like these little 45s. Actually, that 45 is not very 45. So let me fix that while I see that. So doing a by eye is quite difficult. So I'm gonna just remove a little bit of material there. Like so. Okay, that looks better. All right, so when that comes across, that should line up there. So that looks good. This one looks pretty good. Okay, so that looks ready. So I need to do the same thing on this side. So let's get this to pull in as tight as possible. And I'm going to estimate my 45 here again. That looks better. And then I'm going to do one over here. Like so. And then just line this up to the inside. And I'm going to remove too much material. So let's just go a little out there. Okay, not bad. Material is sticking out slightly here. So I can, while it's open, I'm just gonna remove a little bit of this so that's not sticking out there. Yeah, that looks good. Let's see how this one is. You know, that could use a little, little help there too. Since this is a tiny little thing, I don't know if I can do that with my right hand. Let me try. It's a little bit crooked, that material. This will be hard for me to do with my right hand. But let's try. Not very good with my right hand. Okay. I think that should be fine. All right, good. Okay, so these, okay, so this whole piece is separate. So I'm just gonna remove, remove that backing. And I am gonna try it. I'm pressing pretty hard down in this bottom corner. I wanna get that to roll really nice and get that to be tight on there.
I made some of these other mock-ups and I used a, a wet glue, like Elmer's, and it really does not work as well. Hold on, this is not lining up. Huh. So I have like a little bit of extra here again. All right, that's better. So I'm gonna make sure I'm rolling across this top edge very nicely and then pull that down really tight. See, it's buckling a little bit in there. I'll push that in, that's fine, that worked. Okay. So I'm missing in this corner slightly. So it is handmade. So let's do the best we can. Okay, looks good. Gonna push that corner in a little. good okay so we just have this last one to do let's just double check good, right, not bad that's good I had started peeling this material up so I think we're in pretty good shape okay so we'll do the same thing you see so let's try to fix that bring this in Okay. Okay, not bad. And then I'm going to pull this across this top edge, nice and tight. That looks good. And then pull that right down inside there as best we can. Okay. Okay, so that's essentially making the base tray. I'm going to um, you know put something in the bottom to clean up the bottom edge. That looks nice inside. I do that as a separate part. And that's basically that is how they do that. You know, usually we wrap the edges and then they'll drop another piece on the inside. It's a little bit too much to ask to get this to go all the way around. It's a little bit too much. So that's it. So we get nice clean edges. All right, so the box is made and wrapped, so that's ready to go. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna do something to finish the inside. So we have the magnets on the one surface, whatever that is, I'll have to find it when it's time. So what I wanna do is make a cover, a cover wrap, a whole separate piece. So it's gonna be functional and then somewhat decorative also. So I'm gonna make the panel in a contrasting color. It's gonna come across the bottom, up the back, and go across the top, and then go across the front. So it's basically gonna encapsulate the whole black box, but be open on the sides. And what'll happen is the flap that comes across the top and the front will have the magnets in it. And that's how you close it. So you flip up the top panel and then it hinges open. It's very traditional design. That's why I'm showing this. It's, it's very standard. It's used all the time. Making it into two separate pieces makes it very easy to produce. This box is very secure, very square. It's very clean, so it came out nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this outer piece out of this color. This is the paper I'm going to use. So I outlined on here what I needed to do and I did it right on the paper so I could just reproduce this onto another piece. I'm making two sets, so I have one for tutorial for class. So uh, what I'm gonna use is the chipboard panel. This is gonna be one of the other techniques that I had mentioned. This box I made where I did um, slit scores and I folded it up to get the box to make, to be made. The other technique is where we make separate panels and we actually glue them together, like, you know, like pieces of wood, and then you wrap them. And the third technique is where you just lay them and you use the fabric or use the uh, outer, the paper material to hold them together. That's the technique I'm going to use now because I'm going to rely on the spaces between these chipboard panels as my hinge. This is also a little challenging. So with these pencil lines on here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put the uh, double tack on here, double adhesive, and I'm going to stick my panels on there as carefully as I possibly can uh, with some lines that are gonna be guides. So it's gonna be like this. This piece will go here. This is one of the short walls. And then I'm gonna have the other long wall. 
And then finally, the other shorter wall, the cover. So I need to uh, make my holes for my magnets, which I should probably do before I put this all together so I am ready. So that's gonna be adhered this way. And then I'm gonna take another piece, the same color. This will be the inside. So I'm actually going to roll all the edges so it's all nice and clean. I got my little 45s in the corner, pull that in. And once all those are rolled into, into place, I have another piece with the double tack that is going to sit right inside of that and adhere to the inside and cover those flaps. And then I'm going to press very carefully in these negative little areas and get those two to stick to one another. And that's gonna create my hinge. Those are my hinge points in those uh, spots. And that's how that's gonna work. So that's gonna take a little time to do. So I need to cut the holes in this for my magnets and then we'll continue. All right, so I cut the holes for the uh, magnets on this uh, front panel that we're gonna use. And I also took the calibrations that I made from this outer part and I just laid these out on a piece of scrap paper because this is going to be a little, a little difficult because I need to take, this is the same uh, pattern, I just don't have the line work on it and it has the uh, double stick on it. So I'm going to peel off that double stick and I'm going to lay this on my little template here, this guide, right here in the center. And I'm going to use these lines as guides to where I'm going to put the material. So I'm going to have to, with, with the double tag off, I'm going to use that as a guide. I'm going to eyeball this center and try to get that right into position on there on each one of these panels. So let's see if that's even possible. Um, I need to remove the backing material. And there it goes. So that's laying flat, so I don't need to tape that. That's helpful. So I'm just going to organize this here. Maybe I should tape it in case it moves. Hmm. Actually, I think I might do that. Just an extra precaution, just so it doesn't start moving around while I'm trying to position these, these panels on here. All right, so there's my guides, and I'm going to try to uh, lay this into position and eyeball it top to bottom. So let's see if we can do this. <laughs> okay, not bad. That's good. Next one should be a little easier. So I just need to get the space because the spacing in between the panels, that's going to be my hinge, hinge area. Okay, that looks good. I'm just going to lean over a little. About like this. Come right up to here. That looks good. And then I have my last one here, which is going to be the one that lines up with the magnets. So let me just check. I have another tray here that I'm ready. So I'm going to make sure that, because these are slightly off center, top to bottom. So it's going to sit. Okay, so I think I'm going to go this way. And this is my last panel. So I'll try to maintain that same spacing in between. Like this. Okay. So I think that worked. That's a little, little off there, but that's not too bad. Should be okay. All right, so let's see here. Um, if we can pull off these pieces of tape, I don't need that anymore. Okay. <clears throat> so I can remove my guide. And I do have a little, I had a little tiny cut there because I'm gonna fold this up. 
make sure I have that in position. And there it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna roll all these edges. Let's go back to where I was. <clears throat> really wanna make sure that that's coming up tight around the edge. And I'm gonna bring this right onto this top surface and hold that down really nice right there. That should be good. Now I can take a look at some of that detailing that I did here. It's a, it's a little off, but I have a little bit of an overlap. And I think, actually think I like that. And I'm gonna keep that. Overlap being when this piece of material comes around. Now I need this whole part to come around. So that's gonna be a little difficult to do. So let's do this end. This is the easier end. Uh, same situation on that end. So let's pull that up to the edge. Nice and tight. And I'm gonna bring that onto the top panel here, like this. Okay, so those are good. Now this part is gonna take a little extra effort. So I'm going to do this a little bit at a time. I wanna get a nice, Fold. I'm just going to start in the center here. I want that to come up nice and tight against these edges. So I'm going to do it a little bit at a time. Roll that all the way as evenly as I can. I'm pushing, I'm pushing against that little edge. There's not a lot for it to stick to, but I'm just going to do the best I can to get that to come in really, really tight in there. I can actually probably use a piece of material that I'm working with to kind of guide that to push that in there as tight as possible so that's good so as i start to bring this around to the top i can keep that consistent edge there so i'm using this to push that in nice okay okay that looks good so what I ended up doing is I allowed for a little of this overlap here in the corner in case it didn't line up with the chip that was just sort of a last-minute decision but I think I've seen that before so so here I have a little bit of extra material sticking out. It's not too bad though. Just a little bit. I should probably just cut that off now. Very nice. So I'm gonna make sure that this is really sticking well. This is also going to be part of my hands. As you can see, as I'm flexing that in there, I'm starting to get some reinforcement. And then when I put the other piece of paper on here, it's really going to be very nice hinge. It's going to look great. So let's make sure that's sticking as best I can. Again, it's like wrapping a present really, really well. <laughs> All right, so let's... Go back, herge that little piece of material to go in. So that looks like that's gonna work. Really, I, I guessed on how much material for that hinge, but look at that. When I come to a 90 degree angle, it's almost perfectly in there. So that's, have just enough room for another piece of material to get in there to hold that. So I think that's gonna work out really, really nicely. Looks great. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the other side and just make a little inspection here. So that is beautifully clean. Very nice. Okay, excellent. So the next step will be to put the magnets in. I cannot forget to put the magnets in. Please don't let me forget that. Because if I forget to put the magnets in, this whole part is worthless. So I have it inboard. Might be hard to see, but slightly in. A lot of these dimensions are, you know, that's not a given fast rule, but just kind of away from the edge. Now I have a little extra here, so I'm going to try to make this consistent. So I'm gonna just take off some material, 
right about there. And then that will should be pretty consistent. Now the hard part will be to get this thing on center, perfectly positioned on that part. So that'll be this next challenge. But if I can get that to work, then we're close to done. There we go. Okay. So, I'll have to do this in midair and just try to get that to work. Um, it's one thing I'm not going to know. I think I want to know. I'm going to put a little tick mark here right on the center of where this hinge area is. I'm doing it on center. Because once I put this material on here, now I can see that little tick mark. I'm going to take, I'm not really sure what I'm going to take, maybe this dowel or something. And I'm going to push the material down in there carefully without breaking, try to get that to go in and get the adhesive to stick to one another. So I want that to be a nice hinge area in there. So we'll see if we can accomplish that with all of this. Looks good. Okay. So I'm going to peel this off and then try to lay this in here perfectly. And a little, a little high there. Okay, that looks good. So, all right, so let's, I'm going to try to put this leading edge here. Get that to line up. That looks good. And then just get that to lay flat to the other side. Okay. So that's nice. So now, since I have, I'm not sure which part of this should I use. Let me try this little wedge end here. So now since I have those tick marks in there, I'm gonna just sort of gently, I don't wanna tear this paper, but let's see if I can encourage that to fold in right in there. Hmm, not bad. Look at that, very nice. That's the adhesive separating slightly. So let's see, maybe I could use another tool. Oh no, this might rip it. I do not want to rip. Let's try this one. Just the fact of folding this might actually encourage that to go in. So if I hyperfold this just a little bit, that might help. Okay. All right, I have a few other joints here I need to encourage. Oh shoot, I didn't put the magnets in. All right, let's see if I can peel this up. I can. Oh, save the day. Now something I do need to determine is these magnets have a positive and negative. So let's see if I can, where are my magnets? There we go. Okay, so I'm just attaching, see it's, not, it's repelling, okay. So that's how these magnets need to go in. That surface is going to face this surface. Correct? It's going to face it this way. I just want to maintain this orientation. Like this, it's coming across, going down the back. So this is the flap in this orientation. So this first magnet needs to go in this way. This mag hold on. This magnet needs to go in this way. Okay. Well, I was lucky I was able to pull that up. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So I shouldn't be rubbing my hands. Let's use one of the slip sheets. Because even the dirt on my hands or the, the oils and things like that will 
could damage the surface. So let's try to get that to stick. So real case bound boxes, they do have special adhesive that they use and they evenly place that down. And I'm not that familiar with the technology of what it is exactly. Uh, so we're just sort of imitating that. So I'm, this, this process is just a simulation for us to kind of make our mock-ups and our designs. But this is very close to a prototype. I would say this is even more than a mock-up. Okay. Just gently pushing that in. Not even sure if I really need to push it in, but it's probably just the fact that I'm hyperextending that fold to get that adhesive in there is probably helping quite a bit. I'm wondering if I push to the other side too, that might help the adhesive bond to itself a little better. So maybe I should do that. Do it in both directions. Let's try that. Here we go. Okay. Little last minute decision. And there we go. Very nice. Well, that turned out great. So let's do this one. Okay, excellent. So that's my part. And all of this is going to wrap around the black box, hopefully. Let's just do a little dry run. There's my magnets. So this is gonna sit here. This comes around, top, down. Wow, very nice. So that's, that's what that's gonna look like. Little extra space. So I'll have to see how I position that. Maybe I just leave that space like that. Okay, so this will be our final assembly. We're gonna have our magnets. And then I'll, I'll do something to the inside. Okay, so I'll finish this up. I'll have this ready. All right, so this is the finished box. I just added some of the uh, details towards the end. So again, this uh, outer piece that we just made wraps all the way around and the back black box is glued to that. And then we have the magnets in the front. And I just placed a piece here in the bottom. I just used the same material and mounted it to some board. That would be glued into position, but that gives us this full clean in interior. Uh, I have the back panel coming off separating, so it lays flat. So there might be some graphics on here, depending on what's, what's in here. It can be. A lot of the times they do glue that also to the back of the box. So um, I'm just kind of leaving that as an option. Um, so that's it. So it came out nice and I really, the magnet detail is great. You know, it snaps, snaps right into position and it has this, you know, the, I love the black inside with the, the color on the outside. So that's it. So that's a um, rigid uh, box. Uh, case bound is the technology. Uh, it comes from book binding. Uh, like you can, if you look closely at books, this is how a cover of a book is made. And that's where the whole approach came from. And it just has evolved over the years. And quite often it's used for more high-end types of products. So jewelry, watches, spirits, fragrance, a whole bunch of different things like that. It doesn't have to be, but quite often because it is a handmade process and it is relatively expensive.